Liu. Mr. Liu, who is 54, and uh, the first space outing for Mr. Tao, who is uh, 45. Mm -hmm. And we also have the backup astronauts for the mission on Thursday. Our Judge Gong 54, and Long Afton 41, and the Abraham 42. And you can hear the loud cheering around the crowds. I mean, there's no red carpet. But this certainly feels like a red carpet event. I mean, lots of love and respect there. They're carrying the small suitcase. I believe that's the portable air conditioning unit. Is that Yes, right? that's the ventilation. Uh, ventilation because unit. you know that it's very hot inside the EVS this year. So they need a ventilation device and for the uh, cooling the inside. Uh, so if How they are going to use that? How are they going to use that? There are electricity uh, batteries on, uh, on the box, in the box, and uh, there are there are fans, couple of fences, uh, which can provide the ventilation for the spacesuit. If they go inside the cabin, uh, the re-entry capsule, they will connect the the, the, the pipe to the, to the, uh, to the spacecraft. Astronauts now hopping onto that van, which will take them to the launch pad. Big smiles today, confidently getting onto that van. The van is going to take them to the pad. It will take a few minutes for the van to get to the pad. I mean, this is a shared experience that we are enjoying right now as people from the world are watching this mission. And that's wonderful. I mean, it's filling us with joy and, and pride. That's right. To talk about this the EBA suits, I, uh, Mr. Xu, so this is not first time that China's to carry out this uh, outer space. It's not really an uh, EBA suit. Oh, that's not the EBA suit. It's just for flight. It's for intervehicular activities. Uh, yes, for this, this is an the IVA suit. They receive the national flag. So the EVA has been stored in the, the cargo ship. Yeah, they're going to take some time to dress up. So, and the yeah. it's that uh, if they, they're, once they're on board the, uh, the ship to 12, they'll be quite confined places. So forget about social distance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They don't have to wear a mask. Yeah. <laughs> Alyssa, from what I can see, right or now. helmet. Yeah. And these astronauts, all of them have been trained for more than 6,000 hours, right? Yes. Uh, a mix of newcomers, like you mentioned, and also veteran travelers. But why are these three being selected? What are the considerations there? Uh, this is very reasonable. You see that uh, this mission is very critical, as I mentioned, from our construction. Also, as uh, Yan Chuan mentioned, from the verification of the technologies. You see that uh, during the docking, uh, maybe uh, something wrong happened to the automatic docking system, so we need a uh, manual docking. You see that during the uh, Shenzhou Tan mission, uh, Mr. Mian Hai Sheng, the chief commander of the Shenzhou Tan uh, spaceship, uh, perform the second manual docking, which is a very perfect one, uh, docked with the uh, Tiangu 1 uh, tank vehicle. So this time, if anything uh, wrong happened, theoretically uh, speaking, all these uh, three astronauts were trained for the manual docking. But, uh, you know, that uh, Mr. Ni Ai Sheng has the uh, experience uh, during the uh, Shenzhou time mission. So uh, he is more, uh, probably, if, uh, if we need the manual docking, he will do it. Yeah. And also, this is, sorry to interrupt, that was a great view. Oh, there you see the motorcade uh, and the minivan taking the astronauts off to the pad. People there on the street. This is a great view of That's the Wen Tian Ke. Uh, this is the place where astronauts work and live at the long side of the It's hard to believe it's in the middle of desert. Gobi, Gobi desert, desert right? Yeah. So they really put some efforts there to make this environment comfortable for the astronauts before uh, takeoff and the astronauts conduct their final training and preparations there. They moved into the building about a week ago, around the same time the rocket leaves assembly building and being moved to the launch pad. And the crew lived there uh, for a, a three-bedroom suite. Uh, and before heading out, it's kind that of a tradition that they sign on the door, but now uh, I've learned that they change it to signing on the board, so I'm guessing they did that too. I mean, uh there are apartments that in space is better than mine on, on the earth. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> they have this. Uh, the, they have a private room. They have a private space. Yeah, they each sleep. have one. They have room. a bigger living room. Bigger living room. Staying Wi -Fi, together. Everything. Network a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Even have their own spaceship. <laughs> yeah, they got their own spaceship. But it's a seven-kilometer distance from the habit areas to the launch pad, and another 400 to the station. And this is the Dongfeng uh, Space City, um, located on the uh, Diochuan Satellite Launch Center. I had the chance to go there a couple years ago, reporting on the Shenzhou 9 mission, and it was great. It was like a modern city. There were schools there, there were lots of restaurants, uh, hotels, 
and the road names are really interesting. There are Universe Road yeah. and there are Space Road. That's uh, that's completely that's a city that's built from nothing. Yeah, there's that, even the karaoke, you know, for the, the scientists to chill out. I, I, I like the food there. Oh. oh, yeah, that was the very first launch site. Yeah. What was the what was the last time you visit that you you both visit? The uh, I visited there the year before last. So I also watched the launch conference. Uh, it's really impressive. Oh. I was there two two years ago for the launch of the seismic study site. And so you were so excited. Yeah. And how many launch sites do we have in China? And how important we have is this four. One? We have four, and this is the very first one. And then we have uh, one in Sichuan. It's got the, uh, the uh, uh, Wenchang Seven. Uh, well, Wenchang was at oh, the Hainan uh, Island, right? Uh, Sichuan, they have we have uh, Xichang Satellite Launch and and, and Taiyuan. Okay. So the, these uh, different launch sites are different for different purposes, different markets, different audits. Yeah, what was the, the consideration behind that? Because uh, what estimation is received is uh, the space, uh, the Chinese space station projects will uh, would use two launching yeah. sites from yeah. one is from the Wenchang, the Launch Five and Launch Seven will, uh, yeah. will, will but launch. The, the idea behind this is that the, the, the new generation launch vehicles are going to use uh, liquid kerosene and oxygen oh. rather than UDMH and nitrogen oxide. So conventional launch sites, the three one, three three uh, we mentioned the the Taiyuan, uh, the Xichang, and uh, this one Jiuquan is for conventional fuel. Uh, so Wenchang has completely new fueling system. Mm -hmm. Kerosene, oxygen, hydrogen only. Yeah. So that's for new generation launch vehicles, and uh, we're using three kinds of launch vehicles for for the diameters and size and the the cargo requirement. But the main mission is still in uh, in Jiuquan. Uh, yeah. yeah. And also the Wenchang is close to sea, so we can. Yeah, uh, the, the drop the zone bigger, is more yep. safer. Yes, uh, yeah. because once you launch the satellite, the the stages come off. Uh, and you drop the stages into an inhabited area, uninhabited area, safer uh, to the to the hab uh, to the population. Yeah, this means you can use the ship to to carry out this uh, because the Long March Five is five meters okay. diameter. It's too big to uh, exactly. You see that uh, our old generation Long March Two, Three, and Four uh, carry rocket has a maximum uh, diameter of three point three five meters. Yeah, three that was five. due to the limit of the railway tunnels because the uh, the part of the rocket uh, rocket should be transported to the launch site by train. So it is limited by the diameter of the railway tunnels. Uh, because as you had uh, uh, Yan Song has mentioned, uh, the Long March Five and Long March Seven will ship into the station from Tianjin uh, to the Qinglan Seaport in Hainan Province. So there is no limit. Theoretically speaking, in the future, if we can have a super heavy launch vehicle to launch astronauts to the moon. We will absolutely use the Wenchang launch site. But notice that Wenchang is called the Wenchang spacecraft launch site. It is charged by the uh, Xichang uh, satellite launch center. Mm -hmm. So the the same team. Of oh, the Xichang is super is supervised. Uh, yes, uh, exactly. Okay. So what a remarkable view we've just seen there with the Gobi Desert in the background and then almost an oasis here. Mm -hmm. And you're continuing to see the motorcade escorting uh, the three astronauts, you know, the crew for Shenzhou 12 mission heading toward the launch pad. And so most interesting, we just did see uh, a bit of a cheerleading event there, but things are getting quieter <laughs> now. Uh, I suppose we're getting close to the launch pad. Well, it's a big day for, for, for the whole team there, right? For the, yeah, for the launch site. That's right. How long is the, that distance from, uh, from Wintango to the launch pad? Seven kilometers. Wow. 20 minutes. Oh, wow. 15, 15, 20 minutes. very far. And people have been asking, why, did not, why didn't we see you know, female astronauts for this time? Uh, you know that, uh, as announced by the China Manned Space Agency, uh, Miss Wang Yaping yeah. is the uh, backup, backup pro, uh, belongs to back, 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 backup pro. So, uh, not, not, before, not, right? uh, so this time uh, there is no difference from uh, to accomplish tasks. There is no different, uh, difference from the uh, male or female astronauts, uh, just uh, according to their scores during the training. Oh. So, uh, so the uh, the Mister Nia Haisheng's team has the highest score, so they were chosen for this mission. But the backup is also very great. So uh, they already formed a team before taking the test. Yes. Uh, so uh, three uh, three astronauts as one group, and uh, they were training together. If one uh, one group has a high score, uh, it will be chosen as a major uh -huh. major crew members. Do and they also get the second with the second score, the three will uh, the three group will chosen as a backup crew. Do they get to choose their teammates? 
or they're a sign? Uh, this Since is, she is shaking his it's, head. It's not nah. up to them. It's like, <laughs> no, not, not a chance. chance. <laughs> but you, you know, that, uh, <laughs> you know that the backup team, uh, Mr. Jai Zhigang, as we have mentioned, also has the experience of uh, EVA. He is the first one in China to perform an EVA in yes, space. So that is the reason I believe he was chosen uh, as a very important backup crew uh, because he has much experience in this EVA. And Ya Ping is chosen uh, because you know that during the Shenzhou time mission, uh, which was also performed to docking with the uh, Tiangong One uh, target vehicle. So although the uh, docking is performed by uh, Mr. Ni Hai Sheng, uh, who is the chief uh, chief commander of the Shenzhou Tan, but the Ya Ping was just uh, uh, on his side. So 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 Ya Ping also has this experience. Also, I believe were trained for uh, for this mission. So all these crews are experienced, and only one new crew member, uh, Mr. Yu Guangfu, uh, who also belongs to the second batch of our astronauts. Uh, so the three backup crew also, I believe, is well qualified for this mission. Mr. Yan, just the note is that you posted a picture with those uh, the astronauts who's yes, been selected yes. to this mission. You've got personal yeah, contacts you, with them. I think both of you How have cool the personal. How cool is that? I, I think both of you have the personal, the private relationship with uh, with those astronauts. So tell us some more about their. What are they like? Yeah, what are they like <laughs> in a daily life? Well, they are a very good uh, person and very kind, very friendly, and also uh, they are eager to. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it, uh, it, it is very impressive. Uh, they also uh, recognize the uh, outreach and uh, uh, and the uh, scientific, uh, scientific uh, popularization at their duty to the public. Uh, Mr. Ni uh, Haisheng also uh, during our meeting together, he, he also mentioned the the training tools uh, for the manual docking uh, to children. Uh, he uh, he expressed his uh, his opinions about uh, how this handle uh, should be improved uh, and so on. So these kind of things, very impressive. And also Ya Ping, uh, you know that Ya Ping is the first teacher, first yes, space yes. teacher in China. She is also very enthusiastic, uh, enthusiastic to space education, and he al uh, she also uh, attended many uh, these kind of uh, activities to the public, uh, to to students, to to, to children. So uh, so Ya Ping, uh, he she also expressed uh, her wish uh, to perform this kind of space ed education during her missions in our. Uh, Tiangong missions. You know that in the future, uh, the space education and outreach is also a very important task for our station. Also, it is very interesting. Uh, during uh, during the two sessions before, Ya Ping expressed her wish. In the future, she hopes that she can walk on the moon. Oh. You know yeah. that uh, not only the leaders of China Airspace, but also uh, some of our astronauts, including Ya Ping, has mentioned their wish to walk on the moon. I believe sooner or later they can have this achieve this goal. Do, do we have a more detailed plan about the moon landing uh, with the sending uh, the astronauts on? The central government still we need the approval of the central government, but we've already started the preparation for this mission. For instance, as Yen Song has mentioned, during the maiden flight of the Long March 5B, we have the test vehicle. The test vehicle, uh, theoretically speaking, for the lower Earth orbit missions, we can have which can have six to seven crew. But for a lunar mission, maybe uh, three to four astronauts. Uh, these, uh, this, th this new generation uh, space uh, spaceship is designed for the lunar missions. Uh, you know that during this uh, the test flight, uh, it raised its orbit with its own engine to apogee about three thousand kilometers to simulate the re-entry like the yes. uh, spaceship from the moon. So this is a very good preparation for the future mission. Although it is a test vehicle, uh, a prototype, as we mentioned, uh, not the final version. Uh, but still, uh, it, it is a first step. And also, you know that uh, for going to the moon, the Long March 5 is not big enough. So we need a super heavy launch vehicle. The, uh, you know that uh, on the- be Long March 9. Yeah, maybe Long March 9. It has already uh, exa exhibited in the windows of our uh, cask and casting. Uh, so Long March 9, uh, we, uh, we've already do some preparation. For instance, the 510 level thrust uh, big rocket engines. Mm -hmm. We've already uh, testing many necessary technologies for these rocket engines. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, we, I, I believe that sooner or later we can have these uh, potential lunar missions. Mm -hmm. And as we speak, the three astronauts, they are on their way to the launch pad. And if you're just joining us, you're watching our special coverage of the Shenzhou 12th mission. The Long March 2F rocket carrying the Shenzhou 12th mission will lift off 
at the time of 9.22 Beijing time. And when that happens, we are going to bring it live to you all the way through. And I'm just wondering, you know, sitting on that van, uh, when do you think the astronaut got up uh, this morning? Did they have breakfast? Maybe earlier than us. What was it us. like in the morning of the big day? Maybe earlier than us because uh, they have to suit up. They have uh, to suit up. Uh, and before suit up, they have to, uh, to do a, a complete health check uh, and complete all personal things. Uh, I think probably three o'clock, three thirty. They got three. up. Yeah, um, yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. I was told that they yeah. would get up at three. Yeah, so, three so a.m. Three a.m. And right. they've already put on the suit. After they put on the suit, do they get to go to the bathroom, or they have they, put they on? They have diapers? to do the bathroom thing first. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they're going to have a very long day. Yeah. And also, uh, they should have diaper. You said, but this yeah. diaper is specially designed, For uh, much more high diapers. performance than the diaper, the diaper we, use <laughs> we use daily. High daily capacity life. diaper. Yeah, the, but actually, the diaper today, the, 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 oh. the baby diaper was the first used there by astronauts. You have it. Uh, so the astronauts look at the uh, launch tower. Yeah. But you cannot see the rocket at the time, right? Because that's enclosed in yeah. that uh, steel structure, the yeah. blue steel structure. But as we get close to the launch, uh, the retractable platform on that umbilical tower is going to open up, releasing uh, the rocket. Then you can see the full view of the launch vehicle. Well, the launch pad has something very special. It has a lift to go up. But it has a tube to go down. It's like a, a yeah, garbage tube. Yeah, the tube was about that. Yeah, yeah. they do have nice. the white line. If you're yeah. looking at this video, mm -hmm. and you see this, uh, there, the there is left the white side. line on the left side. Mm -hmm. That's its escape route. Mm -hmm. No, escape route is just inside. It's like a, it's a garbage tube, but it's inside is with rubber. So, so, so there's, in case of emergency, you know, you they have a dumper, uh, bunker underneath. Yeah. So the uh, so in that's an emergency escape emergency system. Escape, yeah. Uh, the rocket itself, as well as the launch pad, is designed for safety. Uh -huh. uh, on the launch pad, you have the escape, escape tube, but during the launch, you have the escape, escape tower. Yes. Mm -hmm. On the top, and then in orbit, you have also recovered capsule. So mm -hmm. that recent uh, in incident from Russia mm -hmm. uh, was 100 kilometers altitude, but they escaped safely. So they have arrived. Yeah. So the crew arriving at the launch tower, they see the tube right there. Yeah, you can there. see the Gobi Desert on the back of the, on the... Yeah, a fantastic view. Um, there, the astronauts will hop on an elevator, which will take them up to the ninth floor, I guess. That is the floor where they will get into the spacecraft. But they will get into the spacecraft through the orbital module, right? Uh, they will go inside the Shindo uh, space from the side hatch of the orbital module. Orbital uh, module. And, and then, you then know, that's, uh, they will go down to the re-entry capsule. Re capsule. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and then the hatch of the side module will be, uh, will be uh, sealed. Uh, mm -hmm. And as Yenson has mentioned, during this phase, if any, anything wrong happened to the uh, launch vehicle, uh, they will use the em emergency escape system. Mm -hmm. that's right. that's for those of you who are wondering, it won't be a free fall. There are resistance material <laughs> inside that tube yeah. so that they will, you know, slide down safely and arrive into the bunker. And Lomas 2F is the tallest rocket in Lomas family. It's really? like 58 meters high. 58 just meters. because they have, a, they have the extra height of that escape, escape tower. Area, so. mm -hmm. The escape tower. On, on is top a, of the fairing. Yeah. yeah. When this whole structure open up and you can, can see get this, you can view. get a clear view. There you that. see the crew getting out of the van, waving to the crowds, big smiles on their face. Ni Haisheng leading the team, followed by flight engineers Liu Boming and Tang Wenbo. All right, that's Ni Haisheng reporting to Chief Commander before departure. They look pretty chill to me. Of course, the media is documenting the everything. Yeah. Staffs are waiting there to assist them. And it is 6.52 Beijing time. And our launching window is 9.22. That's mean they are, they're going to stay there for, for quite a long time. Quite a long time, two and a, two and a half they hours. Have, uh, they yeah. have to perform multiple check-ins. Yeah, uh, what, what, what they have to do during that 
this this period uh, of time. So uh, when they get into the cabin, they uh, uh, they they should check the uh, air tightness of their spaceship. You know that uh, disaster happened before during the former Soyuz Union, the Soyuz 11 missions during the reentry because the three astronauts uh, has not uh, uh, had not wearing uh, IVA space suits uh, because a valve has have some malfunction, uh, the pressure uh, lowing down to a almost a vacuum condition and the three astronauts died during the uh, during this course so this is uh, after this mission uh, all the space uh, spaceship uh, including those for the former Soviet Union and the US all during the launch and during the landing they must uh, wearing the IVA space suits but for the IVA space suits if we can want it to work properly we must check if the air t airtight ceilings is proper is properly uh, done so that this must be checked and also they must check the uh, many parameters of the uh, spaceship, including those for the emergency escape and for the handling uh, operation of the spaceship. So, so they must check everything. That needs time. And also, uh, the astronauts stays there. Uh, they after they complete the checkings, they have to do a hand hands-off thing because it's a rocket launch, is rather than a, a, a astronaut operation. So uh, the rocket has to be. Uh, unlocked and filled and uh, checked and, and, and launched. So it, they're waiting basically for the launch, uh, launch vehicle to be ready. So they also complete their checking and they, they, they do it, you know, like a hands-off thing and wait for the launch to, to happen. Yes. Uh, this uh, Long March 2F rocket is a called human rated launch vehicle, mm -hmm. uh, which means it's qualified to carry humans into mm -hmm. space. This which is the only one. In the future, Long March 7 is also potentially, hopefully, to become a second uh, human rated launch vehicle for China for the new generation's uh, spaceship. Uh, so at that era, we can uh, send six to seven astronauts to our space, uh, station one, uh, with only one launch. Uh, but for the, uh, for the moon missions, we need bigger ones. Mm -hmm. uh, this Long March uh, 2F, the reliability of this launch vehicle is 0 0.97. On 97 percent, you know that this is not enough, uh, safe enough for astronauts uh, because. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. There you see the crew entering uh, the small area where they can get access to the spacecraft, sitting on the chairs patiently waiting. What kind of final checks up would they go through here? Yeah, the ground staff will check, uh, as Yansong has ma uh, mentioned, uh, their medical parameters, uh, their health condition, and also uh, the, uh, some, uh, some ins instruments on their spaceship. And they will help them to get inside, because you know that the hatch is very small. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the ground staff will help them to go inside, especially protect their helmet. Mm -hmm. uh, not to be clapped with the uh, with the side of the hatch. So this is very important to ensure their safety. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I believe uh, at this current uh, stage, the ground staff is still inside the uh, Shenzhou spaceship to check everything. Okay. Where do you say this? We are seeing staff wearing different colors of uniform, some in blue, some in white. Mr. Xu, uh, what are their jobs? Uh, the the blue part is just like a, a constraints, uh, you know, to not to explode the the suit because uh, they. No, uh, I mean, I mean the ground. I mean staff the, this ground crew. In, okay. Yes. So they're blue. taking off their shoes, I think. <laughs> no, what, <laughs> what they're are trying they to do like, is that the. Uh, are they engineers? Are they rocket scientists? Because no, they're they're just like a, a, like a servant to the astronauts, <laughs> like. Uh, <laughs> valet to help them. To help valets. Them get into the, the spacecraft. Yeah. <laughs> So they I leave guess the it's, it's not that easy to walk uh, right. in that yeah. heavy suit. They they don't need to walk anymore once you're there in our suit. They're floating, so uh, so I they're wanna, changing. Yeah, I really yeah. want to try that kind of suit. <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> Without training, it's very difficult for you to vary in it. Very difficult. Yes, you must true. have some training. Oh yeah, yeah? to get yeah. into the suit. You cannot even put on your shoes by yourself. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> you need a help from others. So yeah, you know that inside still there are ventilation pipes for the cooling. Yeah. Uh, because it's uh, airtight ceiling, so mm -hmm. if, if we don't have a ventilation system, it will be very hot. So uh, that is the reason, as we have discussed, they have a box to mm -hmm. connect to the, yeah. there is a pipe connected to the uh, suit. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, after they get into the cabin, there will, the, the pipe will directly connect it to, to the, uh, uh, the re-entry capsule mm -hmm. uh, for the ventilation. And also, this ventilation not can only do this, but also provide oxygen 
-hmm. during emergency cases. You mm -hmm. know that uh, the helmet will close during the lift off. If the uh, uh, if the cabin has lost its pressure, the oxygen will be provided from the pipe. All right, that's a great split screen uh, showing you the different angles of the capsule now. I guess two on the right are showing you the inside of the capsule, two on the left showing outside capsule. And I think the upper right one where you are seeing, it's uh, the area behind the three seats in the returning capsule. And the hole right there is the hatch connecting the returning capsule to the service capsule, Exactly, I guess. you see that uh, on the top left is the camera towards the, the side hatch. That's the entrance. Mm -hmm. Yes, the entrance, uh, the fair, actually mm -hmm. speaking, yeah. on the orbital module, mm -hmm. the side hatch. So the three astronauts go one by one into this, uh, first into this hatch, mm -hmm. and then go down to the re-entry capsule. Mm -hmm. You can see there's a like a slide that they would slide the astronauts slide in. Slide down. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And as we speak, how many ground staffs uh, are there approximately at the launch tower and when will they leave the launch tower? I think there are roughly 12 or 14 uh, Oh, so not that, not that many. And there has to be inside the hatch to, to help the astronauts to enter uh, the service module and then go up to the, to the return capsule. So they have to uh, physically help them to move in to the, to the space uh, Mm -hmm. uh, space capsule. Ah, the well, since the astronaut, astronaut is waving, waving to the camera, it seems that they're really, um, they're, they're really relaxed. They're excited. Ah, they, they look they're pretty chill prepared. to me. Yeah. Yeah, so and then the, the crew has to leave at the, uh, at before, uh at about, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the people who are serving the astronauts will be in the bunker yeah. underneath the, the, the rock, the launch pad. So they will not go to, you know, the habited areas there or the control center. They will just stay there just in case anything happens. Mm. Also talk to us a bit more about this split screen. Uh, screen. We've just talked about the left, upper left and upper right. Um, what about the bottom right one? You, that's a top view of the re-entry capsule. You're looking down at the three astronaut seats, right? And there are also lots of packages uh, on the wall, hanging on the wall. What are they? Uh, they are, uh, th that's a view of the orbital module. You know that uh, uh, the orbital module is also served as the place to, uh, to store the cargoes, uh, about 300 Isn't that kilograms. the re-entry module where no, uh, there are the, three astronaut the, the, seats? The bottom, bottom right is the re-entry. Uh, this uh, yes, we were talking about. Uh, so it. the bottom up is the uh, camera towards the orbital module inside. So mm -hmm. you know that, uh, as I mentioned, we have a capability of uploading 300 kilograms of cargoes uh, mm -hmm. to the station uh, in the in the orbital module. You know that, mm -hmm. as Yan Song has mentioned, uh, the uh, Shenzhou space has a different role after we uh, come into the uh, space station era. Uh, during the Shenzhou 5 and the Shenzhou uh, 6 mission, it is act as a uh, performing scientific research, scientific mm -hmm. experiments. But for the for a mission to the station, it is just a transportation vehicle. So the orbital module can use to store some cargoes, including some uh, time sensitive uh, materials, uh, because you know that we need a very short time. Uh, for instance, if in, in the future, maybe some animals uh, to, for, for testing during the station. Uh, so this is fit because uh, it, it, we can just put it in uh, just uh, several hours before the launch. So this is very necessary. And also, uh, you know that there are also some food and supplies, you know, in, a diff, uh, in emergency case, cases, which if the Shenzhou Swiss cannot dock with the station, they should go back, but maybe they need time, maybe several days. So uh, the astronaut also needs this kind of uh, supplies. Well, let me clarify this. So this, the astronaut will, their seats are in the, the re-entry. Re-entry yes. re exactly. Three seats. They got uh -huh. three seats in there. They're going to sit there. But if something happened, do they need to climb up to the escaping tower? or mm, no, 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 no. The, the escape, escape tower, tower will takes the capsule. Oh, they will take that. Yeah. Basically, that works to pull the capsule away, far enough away from the rocket yes. to ensure exactly. the parachute. You know that uh, the Shenzhou Space has three up. parts, the orbital module, the re-entry capsule, and the propulsion uh, module. And uh, during the uh, emergency case, uh, the connection between the re-entry capsule and the propulsion module will be cut off. Mm -hmm. And the emergency escape uh, system uh, lift off uh, from the rocket and then take the orbital module and the re-entry capsule away from the, uh, from the rocket. Okay, so this uh, escaping tower is the only parts to, to provide the thrust 
for the reentry models to get yes. to get away and from the requirement the to the emergency escape system is that even if on the launch pad on the launch uh, launch complex they could blast off they away. could blast off and uh, to a very high attitude safe for deploy the parachute with the the core rockets still standing there yes so this too happened during the launch of the Soviet, uh, Soviet uh, former Soviet Union's uh, uh, Soyuz spaceship. Soyuz uh. spaceship. Oh. You can see, you could hear All from. Alright, the uh, flank commander is about to slide in the spacecraft. Again, he will be entering the orbiting module, and then from there he will enter the re-entry module and take his seat. You may notice uh, they need the help of the ground staff. Yes, and Just another in. staff inside, inside the capsule assisting yeah. him as well. This is a view from the orbital module. Okay. To pull his legs. <laughs> and we should interview this 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 person. And what was the what was the words the astronaut talked to? Because the, right before launch. Yeah, he is he is the last person <laughs> who talked this astronaut talked to. Him. Well, the flight commanders will talk to him in comms. <laughs> there you see. Uh, the flight commander Nie Hai Sheng uh, descending into the re-entry module, yeah. about to take uh, his seat. I believe this oh, is this not Nie Hai Sheng. So let's see who is. I think Nie Hai Sheng is, is going this? to be the last one to get to get into the. Probably. Well, he will maybe this either is, be maybe this is Hongbo, uh, Liu Guoming or Tang Hongbo, right? Yeah. It, it's based on their sitting position. Yes, right. you know, they, yes. they have to sit on the side, yes. and so the commander will sit in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. 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 So we'll wait to see. So we he'll get be the last one to look. go inside. Hmm. Will their families be watching? I, I believe so. so. Will they be watching at the launch site? I, I believe yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe it is a tradition that the, uh, their family, their relatives will go to see the launch, yeah. to watch the launch. Or because of the communications, as you have heard from the background, there are checks and checks because the number of stations that is doing the telemetry tracking and control, mm -hmm. TTNC, and that's uh, lied along with the launch track. So number of stations, including also ocean going boats, have, uh, have their uh, uh, antennas ready and ready mm -hmm. for the mission. Mm -hmm. So communication is gonna be important mm -hmm. once it's launched. Here we are, another astronaut getting into the orbital module, and we cannot be sure who that is, but we will tell you once we get a clear visual of them. One of the three. One of the three. <laughs> <laughs> so this one will go to the other side. So I've just heard uh, from our control room director, it's going to be in the order of uh, Tang Hongbo, Liu Guoming, and lastly, Nie Hai Sheng. So yeah, this is... Forward, we'll sit in yeah. We're sitting between them. Mm -hmm. So the first who got in was uh, the youngest. Is is this right. is Liu Guoming. And now this so is Liu Guoming. Liu is waving yeah. to the camera. So, uh, it's on the far side. Liu Guoming's second space mission. He has flown on the Shenzhou 11 mission. Is that right? Shenzhou, no, sorry. Yeah, Shenzhou, Shenzhou 7, 7 mission. Seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shenzhou 7 mission. Uh, during the, the Shenzhou 7 mission, she, he wears the uh, all-land space suit from Russia to mm -hmm. help Mr. Jai Zhi Gang, uh, who wears the uh, Fatian space suit. They're made in um, space war. Yeah. Yeah. So for this time, are they all wearing made in China suits? Exactly. So this time we will have an improved version of our Fatian space suits to perform okay. the more com complicated EVA. So this one must be Mr. Nia Haisheng. Right, the commander of this uh, mission. Yep. His third flight. You may notice that uh, just uh, on the top, there is, uh, there is an object which also belongs to the emergency es escape rocket. Oh. Uh, during the launch, after the uh, jettisoning of the uh, escape emergency tower. escape tower, this may work uh, if anything wrong happens. So that's for a higher level flight, right? Exactly. On After a higher the escape tower separation, yes. if there is an event of an emergency, the fairing mm. also have the engine, like Professor Yang just pointed out, and that will kick in, and that'll take uh, astronauts away from the uh, uh, rockets, yeah. I guess. You can see on the left side of Nihai Sheng the hatch between the service module mm -hmm. and the recovered capsule. Mm -hmm. That hatch will be closed after they get into yep. What do you think capsule? he's doing now? He's holding this board? Yes, checking out some There are items on the, on, the, on the paper. So uh, he will check one by one. Uh, mm -hmm. So if this uh, parameter is okay, the next one, the next one. So uh, he must check everything should be okay. 
the same routine uh, since uh, uh, Young Living's uh, Shenzhou Five Mission, all, uh, all the same. What kind of content will be on that checklist? Uh, for instance, as? maybe uh, some switch uh, should be in the right position, okay. and also uh, there are uh, some parameters uh, echoed on the instruments, uh, so uh, they must check everything is okay. I have to familiarize with the service module because mm -hmm. the service module interior has some uh, cargoes, uh, and once they're in space, uh, they have to you know know where exactly what is uh, where. So the, he's checking. Uh, you know, just in case uh, the ground crew has left and for the last minute information uh, to keep everything uh, in position uh, in the service module. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they also have a handbook. So during the mm -hmm. launch process, uh, they can visit this handbook to help them if anything wrong happened, all kinds of malfunctions, they can deal with that. Yeah. So this is very, also very useful and very helpful. They spend a lot of time on, on emergency on trainings. That's yeah. right. Before, right before this launch day. Six thousand hours each. Yeah. So talk to us about these trainings. I mean, they also take training to help them uh, to withstand the G-forces during a rocket launch, right? Exactly. Uh, they must be trained. You know that in China's uh, astronaut center, there is uh, this kind of uh, uh, facility to, to simulate the overload of the G-forces mm -hmm. uh, up to 8G. So you know that during the launch, you really we only experience three to four G. Uh, okay. But in the emergency uh, emergency escape, uh, they may experience uh, up to eight, even nine G. So th uh, the astronauts might be trained, although uh, usually this will not happen. But uh, there was a case where there was a Korean astronaut. She experienced uh, twelve G because wow. the maximum of human body can uh, tolerate is 13, 13 G. Okay. And then after that, you die. Yeah. So, wow. he, but she came back safely. She's pretty close, that close to death. Yeah, when when they are asking her how how, how her how her feeling was, and she said it was very sportive. Ah. <laughs> uh, what you mentioned is Miss Saw Yi, yeah. who is uh, the first female astronaut of Korean, who is also my friend. Yeah. Uh. And about the emergency trainings we were talking about, I guess when there's an emergency space, you really don't have much time to think, right? You have to take action immediately, but what kind of major emergencies uh, will they be encountering with, uh, when they're in space? Depressurization, uh, what kind of scenarios? Fire. Fire. Yeah. Or Depre uh, depressurization is the uh, most uh, fatal things happened. Mm -hmm. So they must uh, have IVA space suits to protect themselves. Uh, to increase the reliability for survival. Uh, you see that uh, during, uh, during the liftoff and uh, during the critical points, uh, for instance, such as the docking, rendezvous and the docking, and uh, during the re-entry, they must wear their uh, IVA space suits. Mm -hmm. And also, to, uh, as I mentioned, first they should check the airtight ceilings. Okay. All right, so what if are you're they listening, doing now? If you're listening to the radio, if you can can watch this uh, the, the video right now to listen through the China Radio International, that we can brief you that the three astronauts are in position in their reentry capsule. So they are, they're, well, it seems they're quite busy preparing for exactly. the final final check. So what are they doing uh, now? You can see uh, uh, Bo has just uh, take out a handbook from the back. Mm -hmm. So they must check everything. That's the and flight also. manual. Uh, in the middle, what is uh, Nia Haisheng holding? That yellow uh, he, bag, what's inside uh, that? He's putting everything inside a bag because once you're in space, you're floating and everything floats. Mm -hmm. So it has to be in a, in a, you know, everything has to be attached to something. So he's putting uh, anything extra into the bag so it doesn't float mm -hmm. around and uh, affects the flight itself. So mm -hmm. they're holding the book the flight schedule or flight book, mm -hmm. so they have to check and tick everything, and during the whole process, everything has to be kept in a bag and put somewhere so it, it's, it doesn't flows once it's in outer space. Yes. It takes just the 10 minutes to get there. Wow, and what is that big orange package hanging on the wall just behind their seats? Do you we see get on, the bottom, on the bottom right screen? There's an orange big package there. I think it, that's is that the lifeboat. Uh, no, I think it's probably lifeboat. You know, coming back uh, in, in case of emergency, yeah. lifeboat or a parachute. 
something like that. I mean, if you're uh, landing usually on the there are some also some some risk supplies. For instance, uh, you know, the, in some uh, special cases, maybe you cannot go into the orbital module. Uh, most of the food are stored in the orbital module. Uh -huh. So during the uh, during the liftoff, usually they should also uh, store a little a uh, small amount of food water inside the uh, reentry re capsule. Uh, in case that if they, for instance, if the hatch some some have some malfunction, they cannot open it or something wrong happened to the orbital module. Uh, for instance, such as depressurization. Uh, uh, so they must have something inside this, and also you know that. They even have a pistol. They mm -hmm. even have a gun. Uh, oh, wow. In the they're about capsule. where they're you know that uh, during the emergency escape, they may land it anywhere. Yeah. Maybe in the forest. Yeah. Maybe in the, in the grassland. That's so maybe right. there are wild animals. They must protect themselves. And also there are some uh, echoes uh, for 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 the rescue teams to find them more easily. I think that kind of an emergency happened to. Um the, the, U, the U.S. Uh, Russian. Uh, Russian, Russian, yes, especially during the uh, Voskhod uh, uh, 2 mission. Uh, yeah. After the first EVA by Leonov, uh, Mr. Mr. Pleyayev and Leonov landed <coughs> to an un, uh, unpredicted site, and no one can find them, <laughs> <laughs> so they must protect themselves, even with the gun. But it's been said that new technologies has been added to the spacecraft to make sure that they have a more precise uh, landing spot. Yes, uh, it, it also has a positioning device such as our Beidou uh, receiver and so on. Oh. So uh, they can send the signals uh, to, uh, to, to, to show the ground rescue team where they are. And, and one thing to note is, is that this time they have changed the landing site. That's right. Um, uh, it used to be in an Indo Mongolia. Uh, it's still in Indo Mongolia, but it's, uh, the proximity is closer to the, to the launch site. To the launch site. So the, the logistic is easier. Otherwise, it takes a long time for a rescue team to go there. And you have to search it with helicopters and everything. But uh, with the new launching uh, landing site, probably it's much easier to, to receive the signals. Uh, the radio beacons and everything, and the rescue team can get there easily and provide better logistic and, and safety. And that is also a very um, critical mission for this time to, to verify this re-entry site. There is, this is going to be their first time to use that? Yeah, it's the first time they're going to use the, first, uh, the, the, long, the, landing, the new landing site. And that uh, uh, also requires a lot of uh, control in orbit and also a lot of TTNC uh, and, and, and and telescope, uh, let's say, and all the all the facilities that you need uh, to guarantee a safe landing. And you're what, watching. What mentioned called uh, what mentioned uh, what Yan Song has mentioned is uh, called the Dongfeng landing site. Yeah, Dongfeng landing site. Not the Sizhuang banner yeah. landing site this yeah. time. So this Dongfeng is the first time we use that. The Jiu -Tuan Long exactly. Center, right? And also, it is very interesting that you know that this is Shenzhou 12 mission. The Shenzhou 13 mission, mm -hmm. uh, the Shenzhou 13 spaceship, and the uh, it's already Long March there. 2F I think it's uh, already Y13 there. will use as a backup for emergency rescue. Mm -hmm. So it will stand there in the Jiuqian Satellite Launch Center. So if the Shenzhou 12 can go back safely, it will use for the formal mission. That's but right. this will uh, form, uh, form a traditional uh, 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 procedure in the future that the next uh, mission, the next uh, spaceship and the uh, launch vehicle will act as the rescue uh, mm -hmm. for the former ones. And it is 7.15 a.m. Beijing time. We are a little bit more than two hours away from the final liftoff. Yeah. The rocket is scheduled to lift off at 9.22 Beijing time. But how is that launch window being chosen? I mean, how much error in time is considered acceptable? How much is not? One second. One second. The launch uh, is called a zero launch window. The reason is that, you know, that our uh, Tian, Tianhe-1 and the uh, Tianzhou-2 combination is opening the Earth with a speed more than 7.8 kilometers per second, very fast. So we, the basic requirement for this uh, Shenzhou-12 is to enter in orbit with the same orbital plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, we hear from the chief commander announce something, some information. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the only choice for Earth is that, you know, that the launch site is rotating together with the Earth. So every day, uh, there is a time that the launch site passing through the orbital plane of mm -hmm. our Tianhe-1. So we can only launch our Shenzhou-12 at this moment. 
Uh, so that is the reason the launch Every window is strict, restricted to one second, which we call the zero launch window. But there is another thing. You see that uh, they can go into the same orbital plane, but usually when the Shenzhou spaceship come into the orbit, they, will not, they are not usually in the same position. So usually we launch the Shenzhou spacecraft into an orbit with the same orbital plane as the Tianhe, but lower. Uh, with a lower orbit, it will rotate faster uh, around surrounding the Earth. So it can, as a chasing vehicle, uh, which become closer and closer, finally they can dock together. So what about if we, if we miss that window due to maybe you, you should need another day. That would be another day. Uh, because you know that uh, today we choose, uh, as we mentioned, the fast rendezvous and docking, mm. which take maybe only six hours every day uh, for the two days interval. But for the six hours, maybe not every day. So we, we, if today's launch window is missed, we may choose another day, maybe as, not tomorrow. As you can see, they're putting on their seat belts on. And actually, uh, this is a look inside the re-entry module of the Shenzhou 12 spacecraft. The room is quite limited. Very much, narrow. Yeah, not much room for the three uh, astronauts. As I mentioned, the total volume of the, uh, the orbital module and the re-entry capsule is only seven cubic meters. Mm -hmm. It's so he's using very, very his, his leg and foot to mm. to lift the book. <laughs> <laughs> so How long open. does they have to stay in this this tiny space uh, before they docking? During the whole launch. After launch, maybe six hours. Six so hours a day. So, so they have to stay in that tiny space for about six exactly. six hours. Uh, because uh, this is to uh, the consideration is to uh, go uh, along with the international standard. You know that today the Soyuz spaceship use, usually uses fast rendezvous and docking mm -hmm. only six hours, six mm -hmm. and a half hours to the station. And uh, today the uh, progress even achieved uh, three hours uh, from the launch to the uh, to docking with the station, only three hours. So <coughs> we also uh, we tested this technology during the uh, in 2017 mm -hmm. during the Tianzhou One mission. Yep. Uh, after docking, after undocking, we performed uh, we simulated the fast rendezvous and the docking uh, from uh, the Tianzhou Tianzhou One to the uh, Tiangong Two mm -hmm. uh, space laboratory. And also, you know that uh, just uh, one month before, our Tianzhou Two cargo ship also adopted this fast rendezvous and docking. Only eight hours from the launch to docking with the uh, Tianhe One core module. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even though they have to stay in that tiny space for about six or seven hours, they will be the, very convenient. They'll be very convenient. Yeah. But the, the whole flight process yeah, is, exactly. it you just need to take like 10 minutes to take them to the orbit. It's very fast to, mm. to get there. So uh, which part of that period, during that period, which part is most unbearable or is most, make them more, most uncomfortable? Uh, At first I mean, or the, in the middle? Uh, during the working of the rocket. So, uh, as Yen Song have mentioned, the, the bag will be floating uh, after they go into the orbit. But uh, during the launch, there will be very violent vibration. Uh, okay. So, also, uh, the, the bag must be uh, fixed there very tightly, uh, not only uh, floating in, 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 in outer space. So, uh, they will also, the astronauts will experience the G load mm -hmm. and also the vibration. They must be trained for this uh, to adapt that. Uh, during uh, the, during their uh, and I still remember yeah, I still remember Mr. Wang, Yang Liwei mentioned that uh, during his first flights to the outer space that this kind of the vibration is uh, uh, making him feel very very uncomfortable. Yeah, there is a what we call a pogo. Pogo, pogo is pogo. Uh, similar to the to the jerk of the car, yeah. but ten times greater. Yeah. So you don't feel very comfortable. It's not a smooth ride. It's the rocket that is shaking and, and, and in very low frequency. And you can see uh, Nie Hai Sheng holding this long stick. Uh, well, right in front of them, where you cannot see, is a control panel where there are buttons on the control panel, and he's using that stick to, you know, press on the buttons. And it's said that the buttons on the panel are usually bigger than the usual ones, and they have they are further apart because the astronauts will be wearing spacesuits and gloves. You know, it's easier for them to use. Yes, they have put on their gloves, as you have, you can see that they, mm. they're testing all the uh, communications, all the uh, parameters, and mm. as they're uh, on the ground, they're taking full advantage of the time to check and recheck all the system with the ground crew uh, before they, they disconnect uh, from the ground and, and fly uh, to, to, uh, to outer space. So uh, taking this full time to, to double check everything uh, with the command center. 
It's very important at this moment. And they also need to connect uh, all the pipes on their spacesuit to the spacecraft, right? Oxygen supply, airflow, yes. comm system, monitoring system. Yes. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a pipe connecting the uh, uh, in inside uh, instruments to the uh, to, to their spacesuits to provide ventilation and oxygen. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know that's uh, because uh, because of the vibration I mentioned, so they must be fixed on the seat very tightly. It is uh, T minus two hours. Two hours prior to exactly. liftoff. Uh, so the uh, at this stage, uh, the still uh, we use the power supply from the ground, not by the battery inside the. We, this is to save the energy of the batteries uh, inside the uh, inside the uh, spaceship, and also the same thing to the rocket uh, carrier rocket. Uh, so only uh, about several seconds before the launch. We just uh, disconnect all the connectors, and then the uh, the power supply transfer from the ground to the vehicle itself, uh, just to save the energy. Then because the we only on have a uh, limit, uh, limited amount of energy uh, before the unfolding of the solar panels, so mm -hmm. we must uh, save this energy. Uh, this is uh, uh, the same procedure for all spacecraft launch. Yeah, and they have completed several drills already in the past couple of days, but this time, this is the real deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, the launch phase is the most dangerous phase of the whole flight, right? Because you have multi-metric tons of fuels burning every second. It's extremely risky, and that's a violent energy exchange. And Think about you're sitting on a, a, the, the tons of toxic more, propellant. More than, more than 500 tons. Uh, more than 500 tons of propellants. Yes. The propellants uh, for Long March 2F are UDMH, or unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine mm -hmm. and uh, nitrogen tetroxide. Mm -hmm. The UDMH is highly toxic, mm -hmm. and the NTO, or the nitrogen tetroxide, is highly corrosive. That's right. Uh, so it is very dangerous, but also have advantages. So they, they can be stored in room temperature. Yes. And so they can. Uh, uh, so we're uh, not going uh, to see any of that, the white gas that coming no, out no, of no, the, no, the fuel tube. Sorry There is the level four retractable platform of the umbilical tower opening up. Uh, soon you will. We are, oh, there is the escape tower. I have tower. already see. I got the view of the escaping tower already. Mm -hmm. Looks on top like a, of the yeah, fairing. Looks like a mini rocket. Well, I say it's mini, but it's eight meters long. It's taller than me, but yeah, compared to the Long March rocket, it it's is the, mini it tiny. Is, it is the mini rocket, but with six solid motors. Uh, three motors. One is used for, uh, for emergency escape. One is for the separation uh, in, in, in normal cases. That's and right. one is for attitude control. Oh. Here's the close-up shot. So there are multiple rotational platforms. You know that our launch complex uh, is very reasonable, and also the launch complex in uh, Wenchang also ad adopted a similar design. So you know that the rotational platforms can provide a, a closed space for the, uh, for the rocket and the spaceship complex. So that provides a very good condition for this vehicle, even they will not be influenced by the rains or the, or the sandstorms. Mm. And the whole umbilical tower has four major segments. The one that's opening up is the top segment, level four segment. And after this, level one and level two segments closer to the ground will open, revealing the stage one and stage two rocket. And lastly, in the end, the third, level three segment will open, revealing the spacecraft. That's where the astronauts are staying right now. We're talking about the rocket design. Some say that the, the Long March 2F is the two, point, two and a half stages. Some exactly. say it's two stages. What, the, what, what that means? Uh, the half point. stage means the four boosters. The, the side bo booster is yes, it. Yes, uh, exactly. The, the four boosters use the same engine as the first stage. But the first stage uses four engines. Yeah. Uh, but each booster only uses one engine. Mm -hmm. Each have a thrust of seven, uh, 75 tons. Uh, so this is a uh, configuration of the four boosters. The booster, the diameter of the booster is 2.25 meters. Mm -hmm. And the core stage has a diameter of 3.35 meters, as we mentioned. And also the second stage is shorter than the first stage, but mm -hmm. also with the same diameter. It used the engine uh, is the same as the, uh, as the first stage, but it is a, a vacuum version, which means that the nozzle is bigger 
and the uh, what we call the spe uh, specific impulse is higher than the first stage. Yeah. So it will, it will work much longer than the first stage. So that is the reason, because of the four boosters, we call it a uh, two and a half stage rocket. Yes, the Lomar 2F is going to be the vehicles to, to launch all of our three astronauts into China's space station. And uh, this is the this is the safest rocket so far in China, I think. So, uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong. So far, there are just three types of rockets that are qualified to launch human into space. Uh, the Russia's uh, Suez that you that Mr. Yang mentioned, uh, and China's Lomars 2F, and the uh, SpaceX the Falcon 9. Yeah, well, the current operational ones. Yes. Uh, yeah. Previously, we also have uh, space shuttles, the Saturns, and many other. Uh, mm -hmm. that has been used. So maybe this year or next year, the Atlas V will also carry the uh, Starliner into space. If successful, it will be also another uh, operational human rated one vehicle. You, you know, that reminds me of a very interesting conversation between me and some of the rocket engineering. So, uh, but let's say we're going to have a business trip to Shanghai. You're, you're going to book the air tickets. They didn't choose. Uh, we're here on a countdown. Do oh, that's a rehearsal. Example? That's a rehearsal. rehearsal. That's a rehearsal. Sorry, you were yeah, you can you can book the air tickets, right? You can choose from uh, whatever the the, the 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 Airbus 350 or the Boeing 737. You can pick up the type of the plane that you want to take on. It's and now, what? Um, let, let me let me ask you this, uh, Chou Yang. If you were going to space, what I'd type? Love to. What type of the rocket are you going to pick up from the Long March family? There is about what. 10 rockets to choose? Really? Isn't this the only one rocket that can carry men to space? The Long March 2F? Well, so Web? far it is, it is. But uh, are you going? Then the I, Long March 2F it is. I, I really <laughs> wants to try the Long March 5. It's uh, oh, the bigger the and so probably more com the comfortable. <laughs> Improvement uh, yes. to change it to a human rated launch vehicle. You know, in the Long March 2F, there is a very sp special system called a non-function detection system. Oh. This is unique, <coughs> uh, not on the other launch vehicles. For this, uh, if we can test anything wrong, because the software is very, very complex. Mm -hmm. uh, it monitors everything, and if anything happened, will ignite the emergency escape system. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, the reliability of this Long March 2F is 0.97. So that's not safe for uh, astronauts. That means for a 100 launch, there may be three missions threaten the safety of the astronauts. So we have another emergency escape system, including mm -hmm. the emergency escape tower and also the rocket engines on the payload ferry. Mm -hmm. With this help, we can raise the reliability to 0 0.997, which means for a thousand launch, only three cases may threaten the uh, safety of the astronauts. So that will be safe enough. For, uh, for the human beings. So that's the reason we call this a human-rated launch vehicle with the help of the, uh, the malfunction detection system and the emergency escape system. Mm -hmm. A very reliable rocket, I would say. But what other upgrades uh, has the rocket been going through since its first launch in 1999? Exactly. It is very interesting that, you know, that Shenzhou-1 is not a formal model. Mm -hmm. It is an engineering model mm -hmm. because you know that we want to check the Long March 2F rocket. So uh, uh, as the incident has mentioned, during the Long March 5 launch, we tested the, uh, the prototype of our new generation. So it is a similar thing that happened to the uh, Shenzhou 1. Uh, usually the Shenzhou 1 is originally the, the engineering model, not prepared for formal flight. But during that mission, it's changed to a uh, we can recognize as a piggyback payload, payload for the uh, for the Long March 2F, but that's also a very successful mission. As you can see, not much going on inside the re-entry module. Things are pretty static now. Uh, the three astronauts looking at their flight manual, going through some uh, final status checks. Yes, uh, just uh, uh, several minutes before uh, when we are talking, we heard a voice of the commanders. They just uh, performed. Uh, uh, preliminary training simulates the liftoff process. We may heard the sound. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's uh, the, maybe the last uh, uh, simulation before the launch. Mm -hmm. We often see this kind of things uh, during the launch of Shenzhou, uh, Shenzhou 7 and the Shenzhou 8 missions. Mm -hmm. Less than two hours away from a final liftoff. We even a Long March, uh, Long March 2F is the, the most reliable rocket type so far. Uh, 
Well, Mr. Yang, you just mentioned it will be replaced by the Lama 7 in the future? Uh, in the future, you know, that's the, or are they the, use new, the, same the, time? the new generation of our, uh, 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 our new generation spaceship has two versions. One for low Earth, uh, low Earth orbit missions, yep. uh, which has a mass about 13 to 14 tons, uh, which can be launched by Long March 7. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, uh, that spaceship can bring six astronauts into our uh, Tiangong space station. Uh, maybe in the future we can do this. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, another version we'll use for the potential human missions to the moon, mm. uh, but need a bigger rocket. So what Yang is uh, talking about is a new generation uh, capsule, yeah. uh, larger than the Shenzhou uh, capsule, uh, capable of sending six at the same time. So this, uh, this one is three per time. So in the future we have a larger crewed uh, capsule. There you'll see the escape tower right there. I mean, this kind of board system is usually controlled by a combination of automatic rocket failure detection, like Professor Yang just mentioned, and also a manual activation for crew commander's use. Um, but there is also another type of a board system, the good old ejection seat, like used in the military In this case, aircraft. you know, that's, there is another task for the ground staff. After the, uh, closing the hatch of the uh, orbital module, mm -hmm. they also have a panel to seal the payload fairing. Okay. Uh, so, uh, after this, if anything wrong happens, they, they must use the emergency escape system, mm -hmm. uh, even if it is still even stand on the, on the launch pad. Yes. Uh, so as I mentioned, the same thing happened during 1980s, uh, when the so former Soviet want to send a, a spacecraft to the Salyut 7 space station. Uh, there is a, something wrong happened to the uh, rocket. So the emergency escape uh, just uh, take the sh ship uh, out uh, from the from the rocket and say they landed uh, several meters, uh, several kilometers away. Uh, the, I can still remember the the astronauts uh, later. He enjoyed the uh, joined the mission in the Mir station and stayed there for one year. So you can see the the opening of the umbilical hatch because uh, once you arm the escape tower, you have to clear the way. Yeah. So. That's probably one signal that they have armed the uh, escape tower and it's ready for, uh, for that uh, escape tower to work. Mm -hmm. And um, I also learned that these astronauts have to also get trained underwater, right? What's mm. that for? To simulate the, uh, to simulate the, the micro, yeah. uh, micro uh, gravity, gravity environment, environment because this time the mission is more challenging. It's not just staying inside the capsule or, or you know, just do a space flight or just wave flags. Uh, they have to go uh, literally outside the space station and to work on the uh, robotic arms. Uh, so that uh, is more challenging. What you mentioned is called the neutral buoyancy uh, pool, uh, which have just uh, put, uh, uh, put some uh, salt in, 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 in the water uh, to, have the, uh, to balance the, the mass, the gravity and also the float. So the, the, the situation, the, the feeling of the astronaut will be very similar to when they perform the EVA. So you can see that uh, in the, it is a very large pro in the, uh, in the space city, uh, right. in the astronaut center. Uh, so the, our space station uh, uh, simula uh, simulator is already in the, in the pool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I can still remember during an introduction on Central uh, CCTV, uh, Ms. Wang Yaping just showed her training inside the water. And yeah. because you know that the, uh, uh, the space sales is for everyone, uh, so the, uh, the, the boot is a little big. So she must feel something inside because her, her, her feet is smaller than the male astronauts. Well, you see, underwater training is the only way that we can simulate this to microgravity um, environment on, on the Earth. Well, yes, we there, there are other? a couple of other ways, but it's not, not as good and exact as the mutual buoyancy. Uh, you use some of the springs to lift uh, to, to simulate the microgravity environment, but that's uh, not realistic as you're in the water. So everything is like floating and yeah. it's like uh, outer space uh, environment. So they have to perform a, a lot of tasks either attached to the ro robotic arms or uh, outside of the, uh, otherwise it will float off. Yeah. Uh, so, so all of these needs a, a detailed trainings and this requires the, the swimming pool. So that's, a, that's why a lot of astronauts end up uh, retiring diving so they go to uh, diving resorts you know <laughs> you know if you if you try to find an astronaut former astronauts 
they they would be they get a, used to that kind of environment they're, they're <laughs> once in a either in an exotic diving place or on the way to it yes <laughs> <laughs> the underwater training is very challenging and very tough. You know, after the training, they were so tired that they can even uh, take a chop. They, they can very oh. hard to ch take their chopsticks to have their dinner. So it's they will be very tired after training. But this kind of training comes from the Gemini missions in the U.S. You know that uh, the Gemini uh, Gemini missions performed uh, several EVA during their whole mission flight missions, but most of them are not very successful. Only the last one, the Gemini 12 mission, uh, Dr. Buzz Aldrin performs a very very successful EVA. The reason is that she he he is a fan of scuba diving. So he oh. is has uh, has so got really used helped. to yeah, yeah. So this helped him. So when he comes to China, I I adjust he, I suggest him to go to Sanya and <laughs> and, and uh, experience the scuba diving there. <laughs> Mr. Yang, you just mentioned about the Mir station that uh, I think that belongs to Russia, right? And, yeah. and 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 I think this mission today uh, we'll see the first time since May 2000 that two orbiting space station will be simultaneously inhabited. In space, and last time, it was the Mir station and ISS. Actually speaking, yes, uh, you know that the first module, the Zaya module of the International Space Station, was launched in 1998. Uh, well, at that moment, the Mir station still not were not deorbited, which mm -hmm. was deorbited in uh, 2001. 2001, uh, but uh, at, the, at that moment, it's already been amended. Uh, because you know that uh, it's, uh, it's working uh, period much longer than the design period. So at that moment, it, it is already not feasible for astronauts to stay inside. So uh, they don't have a choice but to deorbit the Mir station. In the final couple of years, of Mir was not inhabited. Uh, but there was a, a also an uh, international community tried to bring the Mir and maintain the Mir in orbit as mm -hmm. a, on a commercial basis, but uh, they didn't do that. Uh, because of the safety concerns, mm -hmm. so it has to be deorbited and 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 uh, combusted and consumed in the uh, mm. in the reentry process. And you're now watching the live picture of the orbital module of the Shenzhou 12 spacecraft. Engineers are doing their final status checks. They're communicating with the astronauts. Yes. Uh, the next uh, step will be closing the hatch between the re-entry capsule and the orbital module. You see, mm -hmm. this is a video, uh, a camera mounted on the uh, inside of the orbital module. Mm -hmm. uh, we can steal that the hatch on the left side. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, the ground staff will close the hatch. And after that, they will close the door of the orbital module, the fairing? The side hatch, yes. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance that uh, the, the Tiangong Space Station, that the astronauts on Tiangong Space Station can meet or say hello to the ISS astronauts at this uh, they time? They were in the different orbit. You know that the inclination or the angle between the orbital plane and the equatorial plane of our station is 41.2 uh, uh, mm -hmm. degrees. Mm -hmm. While the International Space Station, the inclination is uh, 51.6 51. degrees. Mm -hmm. So they are different. They, they, they were, although uh, a similar attitude, about 400 uh, kilometers, uh, but they are orbiting the Earth with a different uh, orbit. So they cannot meet. Mm. Okay. All no, three no astronauts strapped in yeah. as we speak. And we've noticed that these astronauts are in their 50s, 40s. Dia Haishun is the outest of all. I mean, he's turning 57 this year. A lot of people do retire by the age of 55 or yeah. age of 60, and they are still going to space, and that is awesome. Yes. Or are they too old to carry out this <laughs> mission? Would that be a concern? Well, th th they were trained many times for this. So once you're in a microgravity environment, the muscle doesn't work so hard. I mean, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the men, it's the mental, it's the, uh, the knowledge. That bother them. Yeah, the knowledge that brings the, everything together. And you have robotic arms outside the station, you have all the, uh, the mechanical things, and you have microgravity environment. And I think there are also astronauts that over 60 and in the U.S. and other countries are still uh, performing well uh, in mm -hmm. outer space. So it's a physical fitness is, that's very important. So yeah. there's no standard. There's no standard. No standard for the age of the astronaut. Even, even though we are considering future to send scientists to outer space yes. because that's more fitted for the experiments. Mm -hmm. But other than that, there are certain selection criteria for astronauts, yeah. right? They have there to be are. of a certain height. They need to have a degree. They need to pass certain 
physical and psychological tests, like you mentioned, uh, Mr. Xu. Uh, their height is usually limited. For our astronauts, they're usually uh, uh, limited to 1.72 uh, meter. So they're conducting the final check before they close the hatch, and they have already removed the plate uh, to slide the astronauts in. The ground staff is preparing for the closing the hatch. All right, a, a major move coming up. The engineer is about to close the hatch connecting the orbital module. You're now watching our special coverage of Shenzhou 12th mission, and Donny is here with a look at the other news making headlines around the world. Donny. Indeed, well, you have a very nice module there on the desk, and uh, since uh, Shenzhou, Shenzhou uh, 12 is still on the Earth, and so are we, so let's take a look at what's going around in the world. A day-long summit in Geneva between the presidents of Russia and the United States wrapped up early on Wednesday, and on the agenda was everything from cybersecurity and human rights to the environment. Although both agreed uh, progress was made over diplomats returning to their post各号注意，我是警山，警山，富贵根树及布里斯坦三十度已发出，东风。东风收到，华山，华山收到。各号注意，我是东风，第一次东风检查，请。我是东风，请山，请讲。我是东风，请山，请讲。东风，我是华山。我是东风，华山，请讲。华山第一次综合检查正常。东风明白。各号注意，我是东风，收集第一次综合检查情况。李八号，第一次综合检查正常。太原，第一次综合检查正常。魏南，第一次综合检查正常。青岛，第一次综合检查正常。天津，第一次综合检查正常。九泉，第一次综合检查正常。青山，第一次综合检查正常。双城，第一次综合检查正常。五号，第一次综合检查正常。
，各号注意，我是东风，第一次综合检查，正常，结束，景山，景山明白，华山，华山明白，零八号，明白，太原，明白，渭南，明白，青岛，明白，天津，明白，酒泉，明白，青山，明白，双城，明白，五号，明白。北京，我是东风。北京，我是东风。我是北京，东风，请讲。各号注意，我是东风，收集天地化验检查准备情况。北京，准备完毕。酒泉，准备完毕。零号，我是东风，化验检查准备完毕。零号，明白。
not like floating according to your uh, gravity on Earth, mm -hmm. and you have more blood on the foot or something. But mm -hmm. everything changes. But the the, the advantage of uh, living in outer space for three months is that you know was a, there was a U.S. astronaut. He said he lived in outer space for quite a long time, yeah. and he went for a foot massage, and the he's the. The, the massage is the foot is so tender. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, he never used that foot for <laughs> But for other than, you know, working out, other than uh, working in space, do they have any entertainment activities? I mean, do they have off days? Well, the, th the, the very first thing they have is to, you know, to, to have microgravity environment. That everything floats. Even if you drink, you can squeeze the water bowl out and they can float to you. Mm -hmm. Not you have to use your neck to drink the water. So you have to just open your mouth. And there are many things to see on the, uh, on the orbiters. You can see, uh, look out of the window and see beautiful Earth, climate change all the time, and uh, cloud covering and, and oceans. Mm -hmm. And you can see a lot of uh, the stars. Uh, in outer space, there's no atmosphere, so you mm -hmm. see. Uh, the galaxy more clearly. Yeah. So there are many things to do uh, on board. And then you can receive emails and communication with the ground crews. And they're, they're, they're also in store some education uh, programs that you, you teach the crowd, uh, the young generations. Uh, so you can see, you can al always hear some of the communications uh, on the background is still double checking the system workings, mm -hmm. in, in particular for the uh, TTNC systems uh, once, once the rocket launched. We have to keep a like a 24/7 uh, eye on the capsule, so make sure that uh, you know everything goes well. So, so they have to do all the checkings and double checks, and you can see the veterans and the uh, astronauts. They're in a relaxed position. Um, their their legs are not folded uh, as as for the long landing purpose, because the position they're sitting is like a baby sitting uh, position. Uh, that can tolerate the maximum uh, G's, G-force, yes. uh, that, uh, that they can experience. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so they have to sit in a, in a particular design uh, seat in, oh, a, right. in the right position. I'm hearing, I'm hearing words, I'm sorry, I'm hearing words that our correspondent Ning Hong is with us now. He is uh, uh, very near the launch site. Uh, Ning Hong, if you're with me, what are you seeing now? What are you hearing now? Uh, hello. Well, we're now uh, on the rooftop of a building that's about one and a half kilometer away from the launch pad. You can see that launch pad there is very close, and this is uh, this is the closest location that you could get uh, while watching the uh, watching the launch. And we're now uh, about uh, still over one hour before the launch, and you can see the rocket is still covered by the rotating uh, support platform. But uh, from afar, you can see there's a pointing head. Uh, uh, above the launch pad. That is the uh, abortion tower that you could see. And now the three astronauts are uh, inside the capsule. And also we've just learned that uh, the gate of the orbiter has closed. So it means that all the checks uh, of the astronauts has completed. And as we are approaching the one hour countdown, uh, the all system will go through another round of I'll check. This will be a uh, overall check uh, about the conditions of the rocket, about the, about the spaceship, and also about the entire launch field. And then you will see that these launch pads will open one by one until you can see the entire rocket. And as we're approaching a 30 minutes countdown, you could, uh, the people uh, working on the launch pad will begin to evacuate. It will, it will take them about 15 minutes to evacuate. And the last group of people working on the launch pad will evacuate uh, in the 15 minutes countdown. And then we'll be expecting the launch uh, very soon. And you can see that this is a very ideal weather, clear weather with, mi with minor wind. So yeah, we're all expecting this in very soon.
北京，景山报告。我是北京，景山，请讲。景山报告，测量船当前海况及两小时准备情况。长江六号，海况五级，浪高两点五米，风力五级，能见度十公里。景山，天路，长江六号，两小时准备完毕。景山。报告完毕。北京明白。我是北京，江阴，请讲。北京明白。北京华山报告。我是北京，华山，请讲。华山两小时准备完毕，华山报告完毕。北京明白。我是北京，长城，请讲。北京明白。我是北京，天河，请讲。北京明白各号注意，收集两小时准备情况。您好，两小时准备完毕。太原，两小时准备完毕。渭南，两小时准备完毕。青岛，两小时准备完毕。天津，两小时准备完毕。酒泉，两小时准备完毕。青山，两小时准备完毕。双城，两小时准备完毕。武汉，两小时准备完毕。天仓，两小时准备完毕。北京东风报告，我是北京东风，请讲。东风各号，两小时准备完毕。东风报告完毕。北京明白。
，各号注意，我是北京，一小时准备。东风，东风明白。华山，华山明白。江阴，景山，景山明白。各号注意，一小时准备。零号，明白。太原，明白。渭南，明白。青岛，明白。天津，明白。酒泉，明白。青山，明白。双城，明白。五号，明白。天仓，明白。注意，我是东风。第二次综合检查，五分钟准备。景山，景山明白。华山，华山明白。零八号，明白。太原，明白。渭南，明白。青岛，明白。天津，明白。酒泉，明白。青山，明白。双城，明白。五号，明白。东风，我是华山。我是东风，华山，请讲。华山第二次综合检查，五分钟准备完毕。东风明白。我是景山，我是东风，景山，请讲。景山、江阴、天路及长江六号，第二次综合检查，五分钟准备完毕。东风明白。各号注意，我是东风，收集五分钟准备情况。零八号，五分钟准备完毕。太原，五分钟准备完毕。渭南，五分钟准备完毕。青岛，五分钟准备完毕。天津，五分钟准备完毕。酒泉，五分钟准备完毕。青山，五分钟准备完毕。双城，五分钟准备完毕。五号，五分钟准备完毕。
号注意，我是东风，第二次综合检查，一分钟准备，五十秒。四十秒，三十秒，二十秒。十、九、八、七、六、五、四、三、二、一，起飞。T 零淋巴石二八分二八秒四三七毫秒。T 零淋巴石二八分二八秒四三七毫秒。各号请东风，我是华山。我是东风，华山，请讲。华山，第二次综合检查正常。东风明白。东风，我是景山。我是东风，景山，请讲。景山，江阴仙路及长江六号，第二次综合检查正常。东风明白。各号注意，我是东风，收集第二次综合检查情况，淋巴号。第二次综合检查正常。太原。第二次综合检查正常。渭南。第二次综合检查正常。青岛。第二次综合检查正常。天津。第二次综合检查正常。酒泉。第二次综合检查正常。青山。第二次综合检查正常。双城。第二次综合检查正常。武汉。第二次综合检查正常。注意，我是东风，第二次综合检查正常结束。景山，景山明白。华山，华山明白。淋巴号，明白。太原，明白。渭南，明白。青岛，明白。天津，明白。酒泉，明白。青山，明白。双城，明白。武汉，明白。
北京，景山报告。我是北京，景山，请讲。景山报告，各粮船当前海况及一小时准备情况。长江六号海况五级，浪高两点五米，风力五级，能见度十公里。景山，天路，长江六号，一小时准备完毕。景山报告完毕。北京明白，我是北京，江阴，请讲。北京明白，北京华山报告。我是北京，华山，请讲。华山一小时准备完毕，华山报告完毕。北京明白。
号注意，收集一小时准备情况。零号，一小时准备完毕。太原，一小时准备完毕。渭南，一小时准备完毕。青岛，一小时准备完毕。天津，一小时准备完毕。酒泉，一小时准备完毕。青山，一小时准备完毕。双城，一小时准备完毕。五号，一小时准备完毕。天仓。一小时准备。北京东风报告。我是北京，东风，请讲。东风各号一小时准备完毕，东风报告完毕。北京明白东风，我是北京。东风到。全区各号一小时准备完毕，三十分钟准备，及以后口令由你下达。东风明白。零号，我是东风。明号到。全区各号一小时准备完毕，三十分钟准备及后续口令由你下达。明号明白。神舟，请注意，现在起，神舟十二号由零号指挥。神舟
，各号注意，我是李浩，三十分钟准备，东风。东风明白。长征。神州。神州十二号。各号注意，先锋，我是东风，三十分钟准备。零三号，景山，零七号，三明白。零八号，华山，零九号，太原，明白。渭南，明白。青岛，明白。天津，明白。酒泉，明白。青山，明白。双城，明白。武汉，明白。天仓，明白。八个区人员请注意，三十分钟准备，口令已下达。三十分钟撤离人员迅速撤离。八个区人员请注意，三十分钟准备，口令已下达。三十分钟撤离人员迅速撤离。
长长讲，明白您三号讲，明白。您九号讲，明白。零八号讲，明白
您签号讲，明白。各号注意，我是林浩，收集三十分钟准备情况。神舟，神舟十二号，先锋。长征奖，明白。各号注意，我是林浩，十五分钟准备。东风，东风明白。长征，神舟，各号注意。神舟十二号。东风。The private market, the private space market, it seems to be the more, it's a, it's a new and emerging market right here in China. 华夏明白。
And uh, earlier, I have, I have investigators in my baseline with private companies. Uh, China is e uh, There is many uh, companies right there. And also, I think the, the company that uh, Mr. Yang, you work for, have already got this uh, the, the commercial rackets, right? Uh, I come from a state com uh, company. Yeah, I am yeah. a satellite maker. I launched one of my satellite with a private company. Uh, yeah. We provide the launch services. You know, Oh, okay. All the ground staff are called to be drawn from the launch pad. You heard the command from the control center. All the ground staff yes. needs to be evacuated right now, indicating uh, it's a go for the launch. Things yes. are entering the final stages. So you can see almost all the rotational platform has been opened, so no need for the ground staff there. So they, they, they will mm -hmm. leave. Mm -hmm. But still, the, um, as I mentioned, the, uh, some arms are connected to the vehicle with the cables and the pipes to have the uh, telemetry and uh, mirroring uh, signals uh, from the vehicle. There you see the bus taking the ground staff away from the launch tower. Uh, they will retreat to safe zone, I guess, at least 1.5 kilometers away from the launch pad. Yes. Uh, well, last time the, in Wenchang, when the China launches a core module, we see a lot of this, uh, the ordinary people who come to the beach to, to yeah. watch this yeah. uh, to the launching yeah. advance. What about this time? Is, uh, can the ordinary yeah. people come to Zhou to, to watch this? Yes, yes. I, I've seen some posts on the uh, social media in China. Some of the uh, private companies organize uh, tourists oh, to the watch tour, the launch. The tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you can s speculate from a distance away, about a few kilometers. Yeah. yeah. You have mentioned the commercial or the private companies. It is very interesting that all the orbital launches attempt also performed in this Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Mm. Uh, two of them, including the <laughs> Beijing Interstellar Glory and uh, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, Galactic Energy, uh, performed their orbital launches successfully in China. So we now have two private companies which can provide these orbital launch services. All right, 12 minutes to go till launch. And talk about China's the, the private space market, and I also realized that it was not just for the the rocket, but also for satellites. The satellites is the big there parts more. of the the mar market, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are more companies engaged in uh, making satellites. You know, that's for uh, launch services is really uh, relative complex. Uh, not only you can have the you should have the ability to making the launch vehicles, but also there are many security issues. For instance, we discussed about the, the falling area of the substages. Uh, we must uh, dealing with these kind of issues. So this is more complex, and for the uh, for the satellites is uh, relative uh, easier. Especially you know that many universities in China has already have their own satellites. Uh, some are even for the educational purposes. Even it's very interesting that there is a. Uh, uh, some uh, sci uh, science outreach, science publication uh, satellites made by uh, high school students. Mm. So this is also very interesting. Mm -hmm. And yeah. will there be joint flights? Since you mentioned uh, the commercial use of uh, space flights, will there be joint flights of Chinese and foreign astronauts in the near future? Uh, it is quite possible. During the announcement yesterday, the China Manned Space Agency, Mr. Qi okay. has mentioned uh, the foreign astronauts are trained in China. Serious people, I can still remember that Ms. Thamansha, uh, Christopher Ferretti, uh, were trained in Qingdao in the rescue training. Uh, and our astronaut Ye Guangfu also were trained in Europe in the cave, uh, cave training. So uh, we have cooperations and in the future I believe that sooner or later we can see the foreign astronauts taking the Shenzhou spaceship to our station. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was the big countdown clock on the screen you just saw there saying a scheduled liftoff. Uh, we're less than 10 minutes away. You're seeing that huge rocket Long March 2F right there, still attaching uh, to the umbilical tower. And those umbilical cords are expected to be detached um, seconds, 40 seconds to 50 seconds ahead of yeah. launch. So China's space station program has been uh has to involve so many partners from the uh, the international community, including the Europe, Europe Space Agency. And can, can you just tell yes, us how we uh, cooperated, what what fields uh, we cooperated? Uh, we have a close cooperation with Russia before. Russia? Our astronauts were trained in Russia during the 1990s. 
So I just yeah, want to yeah. translate this uh, yeah. to our viewers. Yeah, there you see yeah, the monitoring yeah. screen. Yeah. The temperature yeah. is 23.6 degrees yeah. Celsius. Yeah. The wind direction yeah. is 2.2 yeah. meters yeah. per second. Yeah. And there's also the visibility and humidity monitoring status there. The commander has announced the accurate launch time because the launch time is determined by the orbit of our Tianhe module. Mm -hmm. And it's down to seconds, right? The launch time, exact launch time is 9.22. 27 seconds. Exactly. The sky's clear today. A good it's day for lunch. a good lunch. day for lunch. And just show on the big screen in the uh, control, uh, control center that the wind speed is uh, 2.7 meters. Not a very high speed, just a fit for launch. And also the, uh, the air uh, around the uh, Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center is very clear. Uh, you can, visibility can reach to 30 kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, very good condi condition. Mm -hmm. If we are lucky enough, maybe we can see uh, from the uh, telescope, uh, which can record the separation between the first stage and the second stage. Mm -hmm. We should be able to see the, the strap-on boosters uh, released uh, from the ground. Yes. If we have a clear sky. See a bit of, bit of cloud, but uh, should be able to, visit, uh, should be able to uh, see it on visible sites, the separation of the strap-on boosters. And an escape tower has been activated about five minutes before, uh, before the launch. Uh, I think. It's even longer. It's a little longer uh, because you know that at this moment, uh, if anything wrong happened, the emergency escape will work. Will work. Well, so once the astronauts are in the capsule and the hatch is closed, then the escape tower is armed. Are armed. So they're ready to go. You know, shooting. See, anytime. Yeah. Yeah. We're standing by. There should be a, safe, a safety plan at, at any minute, uh, yes. all the way to the station. Many years before, during the development of the Shenzhou spaceship, uh, Mr. Yuan Jiajun, who is also a former leader of China Man Space Program, yeah. mentioned that the first important uh, test is the uh, zero altitude escape uh, test. Uh, which uh, launched, uh, which initiated, uh, ignited the emergency mm. escape tower from the uh, zero, zero, uh, from the uh, from the ground from, the ground. from, from the ground. this position. Yes, yes. And that went well. That was successful. Uh, that was successful. But the escape tower is is not going to come all the way down to, uh, to orbit. So the, right? uh, if the launch goes uh, smoothly, the first uh, critical action after the pitch over will be the jettisoning of the. Uh, is escape tower mm -hmm. oh. uh, because in a certain attitude the uh, the aerodynamic forces will be uh, smaller than the uh, lift off uh, in the low attitude so no need for the escape tower then uh, in a certain area uh, in a certain period uh, will depend on the escape engines on the payload fairing mm -hmm. and after that if the after the fairing is jettisoned so it's already in the almost vacuum condition and if anything wrong happened the, the spaceship can use its own engines to leave the launch vehicle. So is this escape tower is going to be ejected even before the booster? Before the ferry. Uh, be, uh, be, uh, actually, it is the before first the separation. Booster, yes. yeah. so uh, the first, the first separation the will be the jettisoning of the uh, escape tower. It happened about uh, two minutes mm -hmm. after the launch. We mm -hmm. will see that in just a few moments. We're getting really close, a little more than five minutes to go to uh, the final liftoff. The astronauts are still, um, I think they're still watching their flight manuals. They're still reading, reading their flight manual. Mm -hmm. They just need to repeat that again and again. I wonder how they feel at this moment. I mean, uh, going into space would be the lifetime dream for every astronaut, right? I guess there, there will be boundless joy for. Is there any other that. instrument that uh, that has been connected on those uh, on the body yes, yes. of those astronauts? Exactly. Uh, so uh, they will monitoring the the parameter, uh, their biological parameters of their body. Uh, it so will be also heart rates, yeah, 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 yeah. Heart rate. yeah. Ah. If uh, if they, uh, if they don't uh, feel not better, we can stop the whole procedure to deal with that. In well, fact, some we monitor this all the time. Yeah. That's right. The figure. T minus five minutes. But from our early, earlier experience, those the figure can show that all of those astronauts have been well trained and they, they can keep pretty calm. 
even before the lunch. Here it is. They are very, very calm during mm -hmm. the lunch. They're really even calm. during any emergencies. That's right. Life-threatening emergencies. They're you trained. See, they for were that. still very relaxed in their postures, and, yeah. and now they're getting ready for the launching position. So mm -hmm. they have folded their legs to the to their appropriate position. So <laughs> even five minutes before, they were still, you know, like relaxing. Mm -hmm. That's right. Checking their seat belts. Yeah. So they have, their knee guards. They're going to put down everything and ready for the launch uh, in two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. We're getting really close. That's the live image from the control center at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. There you see Vice Premier Han Zheng watching uh, this launch among the audience. This is a live picture coming from the Beijing Aerospace City. Vice Premier Han Zhong among other senior leaders and officials. There you see uh, Central Military Vice Chairman of the Central Military Chief there. That was Zhang Youxia that you just saw there. So these are top, top level officials. They're watching. Uh, that really speaks about speaks volume about how important uh, Beijing sees this mission. And we just realized yeah. yeah. it's a good location and good timing for celebrating the party's hundred years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a moment of pride too. This is Xu Qiliang, uh, the other vice chairman of Central Military Commission. He is watching this launch very closely at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center among other leaders. So we've got two groups of high-level leaders watching this launch from Beijing and also at Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. All right, three minutes uh, to go till launch. And it's interesting, it's usually quiet at launch control around this time as we're getting close to time zero, not much uh, calm going on there except for a few simple commands and the final countdown and that's because the final status checks by now has all been completed and that's a good sign you don't want to hear too much noises around this time yeah they have a, a set of code of conduct it's already uh, undergoing uh, so everything went well so they're every being uh, being quiet if, the, mm -hmm. uh, if anyone raised a voice that means uh, there's an ab anomaly I believe at this moment the uh, electrical uh, supply has already transferred from ground to the interior batteries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two minutes to go. A nerve-wracking moment. I mean, for the flight crew, for the whole launch team, and for all of us who are watching. As much as this is a moment for excitement, it's also a moment for anxiety, isn't it? And also, the launching schedule is really tied for the China Space Station uh, program and. Yeah, we, we witnessed year. the first core module launch in the end of the April, and we saw the cargo ship yeah. just uh, launch to this uh, the orbit just following mm -hmm. maybe it's a few weeks later. Even mm -hmm. the cargo ship was delayed, delayed. for delayed, but mm -hmm. uh, was uh, successfully launched yeah. into space. Right. Yeah. And right now, for the astronauts who are waiting there for launch, there's really not much uh, they can do for this period of time. They're strapped in, things are out of their hands. They're relying on their team to get them out there safely. Yeah. There is see the crew of Shenzhou 12 mission in the middle, uh, Nie Haisheng, the flight commander, and alongside with him uh, are the flight engineers, Liu, Liu Boming and Tang Bo. Bo. Yes. All right, that's the call out, T minus 60 seconds. An incredible moment to witness. So you Truly see majestic the astronauts view. Are ready in their ready position. Yeah, yeah. They're ready. Yeah, and soon we're going to see the umbilicals being detached. That's going to happen uh, from any moment from now. The arms will be finally they are uh, detached. See the retractable yes. arm has been rolled back. Wow. The historic moment is coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, 30 seconds till launch. The first crew Crewed mission destined for Tiangong China Space Station on board the Shenzhou 12 spacecraft. 20 seconds, less than 20 seconds to go. And the Shenzhou 12 will be uh, Nia Haishun's third space out. That's right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. 
we see the booster coming in. And lift off. Lift off. Lift off. Just spectacular. The launch of Zhengzhou 12 spacecraft heading to the Chinese space station. The divine vessel shipping away from its spaceport. Its destination, the Heavenly Palace. Three astronauts on board the Shenzhou 12 spacecraft will be ferried to the core module of China's space station. And of course, you're hearing the voices from the launch team providing tracking status, saying things are going good. That's the sound we'd like to hear. We have different ground tracking stations. Okay, it's pitch over. Ground. Change its direction of flight. All right. And wow, that's the is... view of the side boosters. You're looking yeah. down at the tail of the rocket. Yeah, this is a camera on the camera second on. stage. Major event coming up is the separation of the escape tower, right? That's going to happen about yes. two minutes into the flight. And because the sky today is really clear, so we have a beautiful view. Clear of the, visual. Yeah, we can have the clear visual of the rockets coming, and the launching off to the, into the sky. and. Right. The That's astronauts, they look fine to me. They look okay. Yeah. And yeah. keep in mind, the rocket has four side boosters. Those are the two out of the four you're watching there. So is that, is that supposed to be the period that the, the astronauts feel very uncomfortable? Uh, yes, it's that's speeding the up. very, it's very up. beginning period. They yes. are already experiencing the G-load. Yeah. All right. When, uh, when will we see peak G-load? Uh, the separation before the first stage. Okay. So we're not it's there not yet. yet. Yeah. The nice. G-forces are increasing. The first, thing, first thing would be the separation of the strap-on boosters. Yeah. No. Oh, the oh, first one will be the setting on the tower. emergency escape tower. If everything goes oh. right, we're going to see the escape Seven tower seconds. jettison uh, in a few moments. We won't be able moments. to see it on, on the camera because this camera was looking down to the strap-on boosters. Oh, uh, that's the that's 3D animation. Yeah. That animation is based on yeah, real-time time time tower. tower. Okay. Yeah. Oh. That's the separation of the escape tower that we just saw there. And you heard the call out. Then, That's the infrared uh, image. 150 seconds will be the separation of the four boosters. Mm -hmm. A great infrared image showing you a successful separation of the escape tower, really indicating uh, the low-level flight, the initial stage of the flight went well. That's in fact an uh, infrared uh, camera that is looking at the rocket itself. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is the video. Again, the site is showing the separation. Up next. Yeah. Booster separation. The booster separation. Yep. And first stage of. Yep. Wow. There yeah. you see. Yeah. Separation. The booster separation. The four boost side booster has been separated mm -hmm. from the core stage. Yep. And the first stage rocket beautiful. separation. You see the five bright dots? Those yeah, yeah, are the right. four beautiful. side boosters and the uh, one and also stage the core one stage. rocket. The, the first stage is also four already separated. Mm -hmm. So now the astronauts should be feeling really comfortable. And they're. They're making some movement, you can see. Oh, they're waving to the camera. Yeah. I'm and telling the, next, the team they're uh, okay. The operation will be just jettisoning of the mm. payload fairings. I think that's the image uh, of the stage two rocket engine. Exactly. So the camera up mounted next. On, uh, towards the back, backward. Right. Coming up next is the shutdown of the stage two rocket engine. And there is only one main, main engine for the Only one main engine. Okay. Main and engine. four the Vernier engines. Of the one main engine right? and that's four the Vernier engines. Uh -huh. Vernier right. engines is to uh, taking, uh, control the attitude. All right. yep. That's the, the jettison of the yeah, fairing. Yeah, yeah. That's the solar panel you're seeing. Which module is that? Is that the orbital module, uh, service uh, module? Uh, service module, is it? It is uh, separation of the payload fairings. Mm -hmm. the, the fairing covers the service module as well as the capsule. The mm -hmm. camera, as you mentioned, is mounted on the, uh, on, uh, on the, on the, on the, on the propulsion module. There you can see the Earth from the yes. camera yeah. on the spacecraft. Well, we can already the ellipse of the Earth. Visual, Beautiful. Uh, so a series of fast maneuvers and status reports there. Um, so 9.26 a.m. Beijing time here, about uh, four minutes into the flight. Everything continues to look good. They should be already 100 kilometers above Earth already. Yeah. Wow, it's incredible to hear how fast the rocket is. The whole process is that before they, they are hitting the orbit, it just needs like 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, 580 seconds or so. Yeah, roughly 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, roughly and the next uh, critical step will be the shutdown of the main engine. Mm -hmm. And then it will work on the four vernier engines. Vernier engines can rotate in different directions to control the attitude. And mm -hmm. finally, and can adjust the orbit to be accurate enough. 
So this engine you're seeing from the screen is very important because it has a, to have a, a surgical position of when to shut down to eject that uh, spacecraft into the precise altitude yeah. and uh, position to catch up with the station. Mm -hmm. And what's it like to endure uh, so many G-forces? I guess uh, we are going to hit the time when the crew will feel maximum G-forces before the second stage rocket uh, shutdown? They've already passed the most uh, inconvenient uh, period. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it already. Because the, the, the thrust of the second stage is not very large. Okay. Uh, only one engine, one main engine. Uh, just uh, before the separation. I really did, didn't notice much difference uh, from their facial expression, from their body gesture. Mm -hmm. I guess they're, they've been trained to endure uh, such yeah. pressure. We can see from the left uh, screen, that uh, shows the data link between mm -hmm. the ground station and the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that animation is based on real-time telemetry. It's not a pre-made video. It's really showing you what's yes. going on in real time. This is the real camera. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can see the, the sky become dark because it's already in outer space. Mm -hmm. It's black, peach black. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the <coughs> bright part is the Earth, is the yeah. horizon of the Earth, and very there are bright. numerous cameras on this vehicle and they have light on it to illuminate the rocket so that everything shows up on camera and engineers can take a look at them just in case of a problem or anything. Uh, because it's already in uh, almost a vacuum condition, so the vibration is not so intensive than the mm -hmm. initial stage. Mm -hmm. So this engine, this uh, the second stage engine, with with has been designed for just one main engine and four extra engines. This this kind of design was was specially was designed was specially um, designed for the the precise orbit entering. Uh, it comes from the original design of the Long March 2 mm -hmm. rocket. Mm -hmm. uh, so we saved a lot of money by using the same engine on the first and the second stage, just a different mm -hmm. configuration uh, with vacuum condition. Uh, but still we need the four vernier engines. Vernier engine is much smaller than the main engine, but uh, with these engines we can have an accurate mm -hmm. chance mm -hmm. on the orbit. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's almost 9.30 a.m. We are almost about 8 minutes into the flight and keep in mind that this is China's first crewed mission since 2016, nearly five years ago. It's also China's seventh crewed space flight overall in the past 18 years. Uh, ground tracking staff are saying everything is uh, normal, is going nominal. You just saw some bright uh, orange flame there. The main engine is shut down. Shut down. Now it's been shut down. Another critical step being completed. So now those astronauts now they're floating. Oh, they're now floating. They're floating yeah. Yeah. So now they're supposed to feel more comfortable. They do look like they're a bit more at ease now. They're looking at their flat manual. We can hear from the voice that uh, shows that the USB, the tracking, uh, the radio tracking, and also the optical uh, cam cameras tracking very normal. Mm -hmm. right. So the vernier and the full vernier engines is still working to adjust its orbit very accurately. Yeah, and they're looking out of the window. You can see the yeah. light from the yeah, window. Yeah, yeah. This the is a camera on, board, uh, uh, on the propulsion module. Okay. You can see the, uh, the folded panels. panels, the, four, uh, pan uh, the mm -hmm. four pieces of panels on one side. Mm -hmm. And coming up next will be the spacecraft separation. Exactly, after the shutdown of the four vernier engines. So in fact, they're fine-tuning their uh, attitude yes. and make sure that it's facing in the right directions okay. before they shut down and separate the, and the engine. Yeah. Usually, the, separa the separation is near the eastern coast of Shandong province. Mm -hmm. How is this uh, spacecraft going um, gonna to find the, the Tampa core Wait, module in the space? I mean, there's nothing that you can use to... Well, there are so many things. I mean, uh, there are signals that uh, transmitting to each other. There are navigation systems, mm -hmm. there are BEDO, they are communicating, and their ground crews are supporting. Mm -hmm. So this time, the astronaut doesn't have to do too much. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to be automatic, uh, uh, fast, uh, fast connection. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The robotic just take uh, care of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Shenzhou 12 mission, once again, will last about three months in space, the longest day in space to date by Chinese astronauts. Oh, separation. All right, you see the great uh, separation of space draft. The second stage is drifting away. That's right. So the next uh, critical step will be the unfolding of the uh, solar panels. Solar panels. 
So once the separation is done, the uh, the capsule and the service module has to adjust its own uh, at, uh, attitude. Yeah. And you can see the spacecraft, uh, the full view of the spacecraft from that 3D animation, right? You can see the returning capsule in the middle, mm -hmm. and then uh, the orbiting module and the service module. Another great view wow. of the Earth. That's the, yeah. Yeah. This is a video from the camera mounted on your spacecraft. Mm -hmm. As we're just standing by for the deployment of uh, solar panels. Look at our home. Uh, our the, re the voice says that the data link between the vehicle and the uh, uh, data relay satellite has yeah, been established. Yeah, you can see that the pin is floating. Yeah. Wow. If you, They're if you tossing look at things the, around. Yeah. yeah, look inside the satellite. Yeah, just enjoying the it. microgravity now. Uh -huh. I think the astronauts are just showing off to us. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there's one first timer. Oh, they just won't let us know. <laughs> uh, this is first time for Hongbo. I tell you that. First time for Hongbo, so it's gonna be an exciting journey. Mm. All right. So this is the, the Shenzhou 12 mission, and this mission will involve a series of technical verification tasks uh, related to the performance of function of the Tianhe quarter module. It will include extravehicular activity using EVA suits uh, delivered by Tianzhou 2, the cargo ship, and the verification of the regenerative life support system. So everything's going to happen after six or seven hours later, right? After they docked yeah, yeah, with the exactly. Tampa Quarry module. And you can see the movement of the blue earth around the spacecraft. Yeah. So it's Just really amazing. Moving Great picture here. That's right. Uh, the voice uh, tell there us. There you see the deployment of solar panels. Now the solar panel is yeah. unfolding. Unfolded. Ah, Great. major tearings. Uh, Normally for satellite uh, launch, this would be the success signal. Oh, mm. yeah. So at this there moment, the it. spacecraft has continuous yeah. power supply. That was, oh, this is the Jiuquan satellite launch center. The image earlier was from Beijing. This is the Jiuquan satellite launch center once again. So the guys who's responsible for rockets are relaxed. Mm -hmm. Their job is done. So now yeah. it's up to the life support system. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a relay race, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is from Beijing Aerospace City. And it's a spacecraft right now in, in the same orbit of yeah, the Tianhe Core Yeah, it's the same altitude, but they need to have final adjustment so that they can catch up uh, with it. Uh, at this moment, the Shenzhou 12 is in the same orbital plane of the Tianhe 1, but with a different altitude. Usually, the apogee is 200 kilometers, and the uh, sorry, the perigee is 200 kilometers, and the apogee depends on the uh, on the control, and usually more than uh, 300 kilometers high. Up until now, everything is going well, but we don't want to call it too early. We are standing by for an official announcement from the launch team. That's going to happen any moment from now. We should confirm, as we already heard the voice, that the, the initial orbit parameters has been sended to the ground stations. But we still uh, need to verify and check in the accurate orbital parameters. Mm. Uh, because you know that these uh, orbital parameters must be accurate enough mm. to ensure that it can have the chance to dock with the station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So only in this moment we can announce the success of the launch. So Not only launch into orbit, but still need to be accurate enough. So lots of calculations mm. there going if on. If it is on not ground. accurate, it will uh, waste a lot of propellants. So maybe not make it impossible to dock with the station. Mm -hmm. So it will be uh, taking a few burns before we mm -hmm. catch up. So it's going to be okay. using the uh, apogee and perigee as well as the inclination uh, to catch up with the station. So at the precise point, it will burn the engine to lift the uh, altitude of mm -hmm. the uh, Shenzhou, mm -hmm. so it can have a precise alignment with the with the uh, with the Tianhe. Mm -hmm. Usually, we have uh, uh, five to six orbit maneuvers before uh, talking with the station. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and Beijing it will be done uh, automatically. Oh, the, manu the, maneuver, the orbit uh, maneuver will be... So this, uh, the, the ground staff will be more relaxed because mm -hmm. it will be done by the vehicle itself. Oh. But also the astronaut could, to, could kick in to uh, maneuver like that. No, this will be not because, you know, that it will be uh, calculated in the onboard computers, not by the astronauts. Mm -hmm. Only in some emergency cases, the astronaut can do something. Oh, they are, oh, are they're waving hands okay. to us. Comments. Hello. They're waving to cameras. Well, a way of telling our uh, team there, uh, they're okay. And another way of saying thank you. Yes, just now we have just heard that the capsule itself has a good environment to, yeah. to open the, ha the, the helmet. That is perfect. So it's, uh, this means that for the, first, for the third time, Mr. Ni Haisheng visited the outer space. Yeah. He became the second astronaut in China just after Jing Haipeng mm -hmm. who have achieved the three missions. Three missions. Yeah. Veteran. Impressive. And, and we're about to 16 battery. minutes into the flight. So the person who stays in space for the longest period of time, that would be his, yeah, his you, record. You can see Tang Hongbo and Liu Boming who are sitting beside the window They're looking out. They're watching out, out yeah. through the window. Enjoying, take it all in. The majestic view. As I mentioned, <laughs> but the, it is the most <laughs> favorite thing uh, of the astronauts. Yes. Just to enjoy the view of the Earth. Mm -hmm. It seems the solar panels are working properly. <laughs> You can actually hear the astronauts yes. talking to each other. They're talking about the velocity, 7.8, 7.9. That means kilometers per second. They're looking at their own speed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we heard that the initial orbit, the perigee is 200 kilometers, mm -hmm. and the apogee is uh, 345 kilometers, which means that it's a little bit lower than the uh, than our station. Uh, this also means, as uh, uh, Song has mentioned, mm -hmm. it will circle in the Earth faster mm -hmm. than the Tiangong, uh, Tianhe, and it can act as a chasing vehicle. Uh, to with move, with to several move orbits, with, it can go closer to the station. So after the close to within the distance of uh, 52 kilometers, uh, the long, uh, long distance uh, guidance will be ended. And then they will depend on the relative measurements, as I mentioned, the micro, uh, microwave reader, the LiDAR, and also the optical sensors to achieve the automatic docking. So, so they also mentioned about the inclination 41 degrees and mm -hmm. they also mentioned about the root parameters. Mm -hmm. The root parameters is for the vehicle to maneuver and based on that root parameters and all the uh, ground control team has to know that, that exact number mm -hmm. uh, to, to, start, to, to know where to start with. So that's uh, all the, the report, which means oh. basically means it's a good and successful launch. Oh, I was going to ask you that. Based on those data, how good of a launch was it? Well, <laughs> a so lot far, of jargon so going on. So far, so good, yeah. Honorable leaders, according to the report from the Beijing Aerospace Control Center, Long March to Avwa 12 rocket has sent Shenzhou 12 manned spacecraft to the preset orbit. The solar panel onboarded functionally well and also successfully. We now declare the launch of Shenzhou 12 mission a complete success.
，各号注意，今天的各号任务到此结束，请按计划做好运行段测控工作。东风，东风明白。华山，华山明白。江阴，江阴明白。天路，天路明白。长江六号。长江六号明白。知道。